Quick question. Last week we preached on gift of word knowledge. How many opened your gift? Not sure. I see a little bit of maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. Praise God. That's okay. You, God's going to give you opportunity to walk in that. You got to ask Him for it. And he'll give you an opportunity to walk in that. He'll give you that word of knowledge. Now it's going to be up to you to have the confidence and the boldness to walk up to somebody and say, the Lord told me this. Is that true? And you're going to be shaking your boots. And you might miss it. But guess what? That's okay. Like I said last week, I'd rather step out of the boat, out to Jesus and sink a little bit, than stay safe in the boat and do nothing. Amen. All right, so this morning, who's ready to open up another gift? Amen. I'm, I'm ready to open this up. You know, I was studying for last week's word, this word, and I was like, maybe I should just combine them because I'm not sure, you know, exactly where God wants me to go. And, and the Lord allowed me to mention it, but he wouldn't let me just but combine them. So he has a purpose. He knows what we need, right? Praise the Lord. So I'm going to start as we do, just to remind you where it is in Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll give you a minute to get there. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6. You have, if you haven't, say Amen. And verse 6 says, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Say, in all. all. But the manifestation of the Spirit, say the Spirit, Spirit. is given to who? Every. Every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of a word of wisdom, to another... A word, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. We ask you, Lord, just to open up our hearts. Lord, give us a revelation. Give us understanding, Lord God. Open us up, Lord God, and let us receive your word, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would anoint me to be able to, to communicate it and articulate this word to your body. That they would be blessed, that they would be lifted up, that they would be strengthened, encouraged, and activated in your gifts. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen. I'm excited. So this morning, um, we're still in the revelation gifts. The revelation gifts are a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. So this morning's word... Uh, today's message is going to be activate a word of wisdom. Thank you, brother. Oh, again. He's gifted. He's got gifts. Activate a word of wisdom. So let me let me just break this down for us a little bit this morning. The Greek word for wisdom is Sophia, like the name. Greek word for wisdom is Sophia. And it means wisdom, broad, and full intelligence. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Sophia in the Greek means wisdom, broad, as in not like a broad understanding, and full intelligence. But this morning, I want to I make it very, very clear. The gift is not the gift of wisdom. It's the gift of a word of wisdom. There's a difference. Amen. It's not a gift of wisdom. It's the gift of a word of wisdom. And then, see, so let me, let me show you the difference. There's natural wisdom, right? There's worldly wisdom, um, normal wisdom. Amen? And then there's a word of wisdom, which is a supernatural revelation of the divine purpose of God. It's wisdom from God, directly from God. It's, it's how to proceed what to do. With what information you have. That's a word of wisdom. Now like I said. There's natural wisdom. Worldly wisdom. And normal wisdom. But this morning we're talking about a word of wisdom. Which is supernatural revelation. I really want to reiterate that. Because there's people that think. 
because they have wisdom, they're godly. Because they're wise in certain ways, they'll, they'll link that up to, because, well, I must, I, I must be godly because I have wisdom. But this wisdom is a gift, a gift that you have to open and a gift that comes directly from the voice of God into your spirit. Now, the word, so remember it's activate a word of wisdom. We've talked about wisdom as Sophia in the Greek, which means wisdom broad and full intelligence. Word is logos in the Greek, which means word, reason, or plan. Logos. The word, the plan. So the word of wisdom is receiving the mind of God imparted to us by the spirit of God with clear direction, purpose, and plan. Did everybody catch that? Let me say that again. The word of wisdom is receiving the mind of God imparted to us by the Holy Spirit with clear direction and purpose or plan. Now today, if, if you don't know it, today is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to go to Acts 2.38 so that I can, I can read what happened on the day of Pentecost way back when. Acts chapter 2. And it says in Acts chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all... they full. They were all with one accord and in one place. And then suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled, say all filled. All filled. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. I, again, I'm going to say, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, 50 days from Resurrection Sunday. 50 days from when Christ rose from the dead. The day of Pentecost came. And all the apostles were in a room. Waiting for a promise. Waiting for a gift. And they were all in one accord as the scripture says. And then suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And the Holy Ghost fell on each of them. And the evidence of that was them speaking in tongues. Now this morning, my, I'm not focused on the gift of tongues this morning. That's not what I'm talking about. What I wanted you to focus on and read all that. That when, they, when the Spirit was poured out. And they had this manifestation. Of them speaking with other tongues. It says as the spirit gave them utterance. Not as they thought. Not as they tried to communicate. Not as they tried to be eloquent. But the spirit is the one that led this. It came bubbling forth. And the, the scripture says that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That's not something that you generate. This is from the spirit of God. And I want to reiterate that because, again, people will take wisdom and confuse that with the wisdom of God. Amen? So, the Spirit gave them utterance. It's Spirit given. Say it's Spirit given. See, the gifts of God, all the gifts, the one we opened up last week, and the one we're opening up this week is all Spirit given. And I know I keep reiterating that, but, but the Lord wanted me to, 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 to camp on that so that everyone knows that if you want these gifts, you can't be in the flesh. If you want to flow in these gifts, you've got to be full of the Spirit. Full of the Spirit. So much so that it busts out of you. The Bible says, like a fire shut up in my bones. It's going to bust out of you. That's how full you are of God. And, and so I didn't, I didn't, uh, the Lord didn't have me highlight how much that we need to depend on the spirit of God for these gifts. But on this one specifically, he said, make sure my people know that they have to lean on me. You know, the scripture says, lean not on your own understanding. He says, this is a warning because so many people, 
will read and read and read and read and gain knowledge and gain what they think is wisdom and, and read the book of Proverbs because it's the book of wisdom and feel like that they've got all the wisdom. And yes, it's from God, but they'll confuse it with a word of wisdom. And sometimes they'll speak to someone something that they believe is for them. And it's not what God told them to say. It's what they thought. That's natural wisdom. Using even scripture to try to manage things when it's not what God is saying. It's spirit led. Not led by suspicion. Not led by people. Not led by this is what I think is going on. This is Lord. I don't know. And unless you tell me, I can't speak. That's a word of wisdom. So it's spirit given. Amen. So in, uh, I want to I show you in chapter 15. This is still uh, the day of Pentecost. And, and there's people around them. And, and, and they begin to speak. It says, for these are not drunken as you suppose. They're not, drink, they're not drunk like you think. Seeing it's the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in the last days. What days are we in church? God saith, God, I will pour out what? My spirit on all flesh. And what's going to happen? How does this, how does the day of Pentecost go with the gifts of the spirit? What's going to happen? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy let me stop there for those of you who don't believe in women preachers read your bible because according to what i just read he says and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams i'm still young because i don't have that many dreams I'm, that's what i'm gonna claim in jesus name and on my servants and on my ha handmaidens, there you are again, ladies. I will pour out in those days, again, my spirit and they shall prophesy. Amen. Why did, why, did you see over and over? He kept saying, it's by my spirit. It's by my spirit, church. Don't get it confused when you try to prophesy or you, you've got people out there trying to fortune tell and tell the future and things like that. And it's got nothing to do with the spirit of God. This, not, to not be confused, there are those people that are combining witchcraft and combining foretelling and all these things with God, that's not of God. This is spirit led. Spirit-led prophecy, spirit-led tongues, spirit-led wisdom, spirit-led knowledge, spirit-led healing. Every single gift is spirit-led. And it says the spirit was given for all. It says right there in verse 15, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day and say of God that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say, it, it's, for me. it's for me. Amen. And, and I'm a son, right? How many sons? And your sons will prophesy. And your daughters and your daughters will prophesy. Claim it. I'm going to prophesy. Amen. And, and the young man, I'm going to dream some dreams. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to, uh, young man, I'm going to see some visions. Say it. Any vision? No. Claim it. I'm young in, this, in, in, in Jesus' name. And the old man will dream dreams. That's all right. I'm old in the spirit too. God gave me more wisdom than I, than I should have. Praise God. And then this makes me look even older. Hallelujah. It's spirit given church. It's not self. Okay. It's not what you know and how much information you have. It's by the Spirit of God. Every single gift has to be led by the Spirit. And that's how you know you, you want to know, is this me or is this you, God? Who's leading? Who's driving that train? Who's, who's, who's driving that car? Who's leading that? Is it you? Is it your desire? Or are you truly asking God, speak, Lord. Give me knowledge that I can speak. Give me wisdom that I can speak. Help me, Lord God, to... To pour it out. Because each of these gifts are for what? For you. For, for you. God gave you these gifts. They're for you. Amen. Now I want to go. To Exodus 35. I'm not going to make fun of my wife this morning. But I will mention her probably every time. So 
pray for me. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her credit. Because through her wisdom, she was like, and I fought it a little bit. And the Lord was like, listen to your wife. And I was like, man, where do I go, Lord? Where do I go to, to talk about the word of wisdom? And she said, you, you need to go probably to the tabernacle. And I was like, no, that's not it. Where else, Lord? Where else, Lord? And he gave me some other ones. And I just kept hearing in my ear, go to the tabernacle with my wife's voice. Go to the tabernacle. <laughs> Fine. So I started to read, right? And I was like, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Things that I forgot were there were there. And, and let's see if you pick it up of what, what God was doing. Now, remember, we're talking about a word of wisdom, right? So in Exodus chapter 35, to give you a background, Israel has come out of Egypt, has come out of slavery, has come out of bondage, has come out of the world, if you will. And then all of a sudden, God says, okay, I need you to build something. And y'all have been slaves and making pyramids and you've been making this and that. And y'all have been slaves and you might not know what you need to know in order to approach me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. And so in chapter, chapter 35 and beginning with verse 30, it says, And Moses said unto the children of Israel... This is Genesis, I'm sorry, Exodus 35, 30. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Judah. And he had filled him with the, what? The Spirit of God in what? In wisdom. In, in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting stones to set them and in carving wood and to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aho Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach. Of the tribe of Dan. Them hath he filled with wisdom. Watch this. Them hath he filled with wisdom of heart. That kept popping out. I was like what is that Lord? To work with all manner of work. Of, of the engraver. And of the cunning workman. Of the embroiderer. In blue and in purple and in scarlet. And in fine linen. And, and as the weaver. Even unto them that do any work. Of those that devised cunning work. Verse chapter 36. Then brought Bezalel, which is called Bez. Then brought Bez and Holiab to every wise hearted man. It wasn't for just those two. So for those that were like, well, it was just for them. No, no, no. All of a sudden he says, all right. So he brought it to every wise hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom again. Understanding to know, okay, right here, to know how to work. Everybody say to know how to work. To know how to work. It's to know, Amen. right? All manner of work for what? Sure. For the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord hath commanded. Amen. And Moses called Bezalel and Ohaliab to every wise hearted and every and every wise hearted man. In whose the heart of the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come into the work to do it. Amen. So going, going back to verse 31 of chapter 35. God gave them what? By the Spirit of God, it says, by the Spirit of God, again, he highlights that this is not man's, it's not even Moses' wisdom. By the Spirit of God, he, in wisdom, he filled them with wisdom, he filled them with understanding, he filled them with knowledge in all manner of workmanship. This is Spirit given. What, what, what did you just read there? These people were building the tabernacle of God, the temple of God. And he, and if you read the, the chapters, he gave them 
the, a word of wisdom on how to create gold. How to, how to structure gold and how to engrave and how to embroider and, and how to cut stones so that they shine. They, they, they were made ge- gemologists. Ge- gemologist. God created them right there and then. He created gold workers and silver workers and brass workers right in them. Just downloaded into their spirit. And how to work with wood. I was reading all this and I was like, I want to know all that because I am not. You know, I'm not one of them Home Depot dads. To make everybody else look like, you know, bad on the weekend. You know, these brothers right here. All good with their hands. I'm like, it's broke. Call somebody. Right? What I probably need to do is like, Lord, download it. And then fix it, right? So my wife could be happy. Verse 32. So can you imagine all these different things? God just said, all right, you know how to do this now. Sister, sister, you know how to do this now. This is what the kingdom needs, so you know how to do it. God just gives you supernatural, a word of wisdom. Boom, you have it. You have people that have no education. That are very, very successful. How? Talent? A little bit, maybe. Some natural wisdom? Possibly. But God-given wisdom, just to, to do it. You know, there are many times in our life, and my wife and I claim to have thought of this before anybody else. You know, and who's to say that that wasn't God telling us, hey, I don't want you to work forever. So here's an idea. Boom. One day we're standing. Y'all remember Blockbuster? Too old for that? All right. Yeah. We're standing in a long line at Blockbuster. Oh. And my wife goes, you know what they, and this was a long time ago, way before what I'm fixing to tell you. You know what we should do? We should come up with a vending machine that people could walk up to and, and just get the movie out. And just, doop, doop. can you imagine how fast that line would run? I was like, yeah, but how would we get paid? And how do we know that they make sure they bring the movie back? I don't know. And that was it. And then Redbox pops out. We're like, oh. they're everywhere. I'm like, and my wife looks at me like, you should have listened. You should have listened. I'm like, Lord, help me, Jesus. I, I have to live with that now. Right? What else was it? There were several. Should have been retired right now. Which one? The drive-in here in Odessa. Because there used to be one. She said, you know what would be nice? A drive-in. And people could drive up and their families. And we could play this. And old school movies and things like that. And I was like, man, yeah, that'd be nice. But you need a big old piece of land. And, uh, and who knows? And that's a great idea. A couple, three, four, five years later. Bloop. She's like. I was like, Yes. You were right. I was less right. I didn't listen. My fault. Yeah. Right? So, can you imagine? Word of wisdom. God was... See, that's how I know my wife's a prophet. God's been speaking to her before she knew God. And, I, and sometimes these, these gifts, a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom, now that you're learning about them, you're going, wait a minute. I, I kind of functioned in that gift without even knowing I had that gift. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, y'all start looking back on your life. Wait a minute, God did speak to me and I, I, I did do that and, and it did turn out right and I didn't know why I thought that or what reason. I just thought, you know, that was my great idea. God was like, hello. Give me a little bit of credit. Right? See, my wife just was gleaming right now, glowing, right? But it's Jesus. Jesus gave it to you. Not, it wasn't you. No. Amen. No, she's wise. So, back to the word. I rabbit trail for a little bit. But that's what I'm talking about. It's a word of wisdom given by God. God can, God can give you a word of wisdom for anything. Somebody can need healing and he give you a word of wisdom on how they need to handle that. Somebody can need direction and guidance. Somebody can need an idea for business. Wisdom. It, it, God, don't put God in a box. It's only for church and in church. And do... 
God can use that to bless you, period. Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God gave them the ability to do works for the tabernacle. What was created? Um, you know, I didn't send the picture. I should have sent it. I didn't send it. Um, he created seven pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. And, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run right through them just for the sake of time. Let's see here. Brandon, upload that, son. He, he gave them these gifts so that they could create something, right? So they created these seven pieces of furniture amongst others. But when he talked about working of gold, these are the things, can you imagine not knowing how to work gold and going, all right, Lord, you gave me some plans. Uh, okay, how do we make that? You ever try to figure something out and it didn't look like, like, you know, that nailed it. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to do this on your own? Nailed it. It's all. But the first piece of furniture here is the altar. And, the, and it's, it's said that it was made out of copper instead of brass, but scripture says brass. So we're going to go with brass, a brass altar. This is, this is where I, I, I need y'all to listen in the spirit. The, the altar was an actual altar, right? But this is where sacrifice was made. This is where they brought something to sacrifice and, and to, to shed blood so they would get their sins covered for the year. Let me bring it to you. This is where repentance is done. This is where God, this is where you ask for forgiveness. Now, I want you to notice this is all an entire approach. To God. So why did he give them wisdom to create these things? It was for a purpose. What's the plan? So we come to sacrifice and repentance. And then we come to the, the basin. That's where you wash. That's where you get baptized. That's where scripture, the New Testament says, uh, baptism and the washing of the word. That's how it applies to you now. In approach to God, this is you approaching the Lord approaching your walk with God. And then you go to the table of showbread where they had 12 pieces of bread. This is the table of the Lord. Amen. A depiction of your bread, your meat, being filled with God, eating, not just in the natural, but in the spirit. And I know I'm just going through this real quick and just give you a few little Snippets, but then you have the altar incense with a picture of prayer and worship. An approach to, remember this is an approach to God. Prayer and worship. And then you have the menorah, the, 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 seven, the candlestick, which was a picture of the church, a picture of the light never going out, a picture of an anointing being filled all the time because it always had oil. And then you go past the veil to the Ark of the Covenant, where inside it held manna, which again speaks of your, your daily bread, how God provides for us daily. And then it had the, the rod of Aaron, which speaks of authority, but it also speaks because it budded from a dead stick. It also speaks of when something's dead coming to life, resurrection power, right? Right? And then you have the, the mercy seat where God sat and poured out more mercy to you and to me. A, an ability to be able to come through the throne. See, back in those days, they, only certain people could get past the veil into the mercy seat. Only certain priests that had to be pure, they had to be cleansed. They, had to, they even put bells on the bottom of their, their robes with pomegranates so that if they stopped ringing while they were in there, they could pull them out in case they were dead. Because they approach God incorrectly. Because to God, approach matters. See, 
I don't want to approach God any old way. Yes, he says, come boldly before the throne. And yes, you are a son and a daughter of God, but you should consider, am I coming before you correctly, Lord? That should be on our heart because we love him. Because we want to honor him. Yes, he'll receive us anyway. He will receive you just the way you came. And he doesn't want you to leave just the same. But it doesn't take away should we approach him a certain way. Amen. But what the Lord did was when, when Christ was crucified, it said that the veil, and you don't see the veil, but they created a beautiful veil as well. And we read that. And it was ripped top from bottom to top. That, that, that everyone now had access to the covenant. Everyone had access to the mercy seat. And I know that you think I'm getting off topic. But a word of wisdom will take knowledge and take a, 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 a why, a take a what, and tell you why. He created, he had them create all this for what? So that they could approach and have access to the throne of God. They could have access to mercy. They could have access to a covering. They could have access to repentance and all these things that were shadows of what was to come. God gave them this, these pieces of furniture, a word of wisdom to create. A word of wisdom to create and what they created was for the wisdom on how to approach God. Coming repentance, coming in, 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 in sacrifice, right? Honor. To have access to God because approach matters. Say it matters. Get a, word, get a word of wisdom. When you're coming before God and when you're coming into prayer or when you're coming into worship, the Lord may speak to you. I want you to worship me this way. It is for a purpose. It may be the day of your deliverance. It may be the day that he baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. If you just listen and he gives you wisdom on how to approach him. See, that entire furniture was an approach to the throne. And that was the reason why it was created. A word of wisdom was given to these people that never knew how to do these things. Okay, yes, Lord. I don't care if you know how to do them. I don't care if you think you're qualified. I don't care if people have told you that you're not worthy, that you're not qualified, that you can't accomplish me, that you'll never accomplish this or you'll never do that in God. The devil is a liar. Amen. Because God, all, I can do all things. Say, I can. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Not just the people that have degrees like a thermometer and theologians and people that have been serving God for 20 years. You can do more in Christ today than they've done their entire life if you just lend yourself to the gifts of God, the Spirit of God, and flow. Too many people will try to disqualify you. Because of what you don't have or what education you don't have or, or how long you haven't been in the church. Wrong. They couldn't get it more wrong. They need to read their Bible. Amen. <clears throat> so. We we'll get back to the word of God. And. <clears throat> access to the approach is why this was created. The word of wisdom was so that you would have a way to God back then. Now, chapter, chapter 36 and verse 1 says, <clears throat> Then wrought Bez and the other guy to every wise hearted man. And what does it say? To know how to work. Again, this is evidence. It's not. It, it's it's to know how it's the plan it's it's God if God gives you a word of knowledge well now what do I do with it you can have all the knowledge in the world but if you don't know what to do with it it's it's powerless you've heard that that saying knowledge is power no it's not if you don't apply it it's nothing applied knowledge is power knowing how to apply the knowledge that God gives you that's power knowing how to 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 to, to work it out to, to function in it, to operate in it. That is power, not just knowledge. So it says right here, 
that whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work, know how, all the manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. All manner of work. Not just yourself. Don't be frustrated. Like, I can't figure this out. You know? Right? That's how we work it out. <laughs> the Lord, I need a word of wisdom because I'm fixing to lose my cool. Right? In verse 2, it says, wise hearted again. <clears throat> and Moses called Bez and the other guy, every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. Wise hearted. I was, I kept reading that, reading that, reading that. I was like, okay, there's wisdom. But why does he keep saying the wise hearted? So I looked up the definition of wise hearted and it says an understanding disposition. A disposition of understanding. And then there's a scripture that says what? Do y'all know? Get wisdom and with wisdom get. Get understanding. Right? Get knowledge and understanding. <clears throat> In other words, a word of wisdom is a supernatural wisdom coupled with understanding and direction for application. I'm going to say that again. A word of wisdom is a supernatural wisdom. It's coupled with understanding and direction for application to apply it. Now, I want to give some, some examples in Scripture of a word of wisdom. So everybody knows this one, right? First one probably that you can really think of is Noah. God spoke to him and said, destruction's coming. Discretion's coming, a flood is coming, rain is coming, and you need to build a boat, an ark, for the saving of whoever would listen, but it ended up being saving for him and his household. Amen? So God, God told him what was going to happen, but he could have had that knowledge and go, Whoo, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you for letting me know that. Do I top, get to the top of the tree, top of the mountain? But God gave him a word of wisdom on what to do and how to build specifically a ark that was unsinkable. I was, I was, I, this was way back when, and I don't have that article with me or that information, but, but I remember reading about somebody recreating on a whole lot smaller scale the Noah's Ark based on the, the structure of Scripture. And then they tried every storm that they could put at it. The, uh, the, with you know winds and fans and whatnot, they tri and tried to make it sink, and it was unsinkable. As a matter of fact, one of the I think it was during the Confederate War that they had a ship that was designed after that structure, which they named the unsinkable ship. This is God's wisdom on how to create something that has no motor, that has no rudder, that has no way to drive it, and says, "All right, create this boat. Y'all gonna chill in it until everything is done." And then it's going to park. Nowadays, you know, you got stuff like the Titanic. All kinds of man's wonder and, and, and wisdom and, and, and innovation. And it still could not stay afloat. But the Lord giving one man wisdom who had never even seen a boat on how to create one. And it survived the biggest storm ever. Amen. That is what a word of wisdom will do to you. Not only will a word of wisdom give you a direction and guidance, but it will save you. It will save you. And if you listen, it might save you and others. Noah saved him and his family. And all the animals of the earth to replenish the earth again. It saved them all. Because Noah listened. Because Noah was looking for, for wisdom from God. Well, he was listening for wisdom from God. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to give you another example. You know what? You don't have to go there. I'm going to tell you about it. 1 Kings chapter 3 is about King Solomon. Who is said to be the wisest man ever. Because he asked the Lord for wisdom. King Solomon was in a dilemma. As king, two women come up to him. And they both within three days, according to scripture, within three days, had babies one from another. 
And they both were sleeping and one rolled on its baby and killed it. And while it was sleeping, they found out that they killed the baby. So she went and did a little switcheroo. She took her dead baby, put it under the other mama and brought the living baby and came back to her. And when mom wakes up, she notices she goes to nurse her baby. And the baby's dead. And after further inspection, this isn't my baby. How many know your baby? Right? I remember when my boys were born, I followed them all the way to the nursery. Where y'all going with my baby? You know? And like that, and I was like, okay, all right. Y'all put it in that one right there. They couldn't, they couldn't strip it away. Your wife's awake. That's cool. Just tell her I said hello. And I waited. Okay. Oh, they're taking her back to mama. They're taking them back to mama. Her. My bad. Taking them back to mama. And to follow back. Okay. That's, yep. Yeah, that's the same one. Okay. Y'all don't do at least no switcheroo. I know my, I didn't want to lose them. Margaret was like, yep, that's him. She didn't have to see him. She see him. He went away, came back clean. Yep. That's him. Right? So mama looks at her baby and goes, this is not my kid. And goes to King Solomon and says, King Solomon, hold on. This is what happened. This lady killed her baby and did a switch. She has my child who is alive in her hands. And they took the baby away from me in the middle of the night. And then the lady says, no, you're lying. That, that dead baby is your baby. You, you killed him, not me. Can you imagine Solomon in that kind of dilemma? Brand newborns, three days, they were born from each other. So Solomon, getting a word of wisdom, says, okay, tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut the baby in half. Grab a leg, we're going to cut him in half. And uh, the mom, the true mom, says, no, 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 no. Let the child live. Give her to her. Don't kill him. The, the, the thief says, no, no, let's split him. So she can quit whining. And, and King Solomon goes, <laughs> yeah, this is the mom. That one ain't. Give the baby to her. With a word of wisdom, a child was restored back to her mom. Can you imagine being in that dilemma? Imagine they came to you and said, hey, you're the only one we can think of that has enough wisdom. Um, this is what happened. This the dead baby. And then you're like, that one, don't, I don't know what that one looks like you. Does it look like dad? Who's the dad? You know, I mean, you're going to start like trying to figure it out all with, you know, detective. What are you going to do? But a word of wisdom from God can give you the wisdom that you need. That It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from detective work. It doesn't come from information that you can see. It comes directly from the spirit of God. That's a word of wisdom. So if you want that gift and you want to flow through that gift, don't get confused when you're trying to be detective. That's not a word of wisdom. Right? If I see you in here in church with a big old magnifying glass, I'm like, that ain't wisdom, sister. He had wisdom on how to handle the situation. Direction on how to handle the situation. That's what a word of wisdom does. Gives you direction, gives you guidance, shows you the plan on how to handle it. So the outcome is what it was supposed to be. Wisdom from God is untainted. You can't mess that up. How many know we've messed things up going by our own wisdom? Right? Amen? I've done it time and time again. I'm trying to, uh, oh, I think this is what's going on. You're wrong. Right? But if you ask God, Lord, give me a word of wisdom in this situation. Give me a word of knowledge in this situation. Let me function on a word of wisdom. Let me handle this situation by the Spirit of God completely. But you can ask for the Spirit of wisdom, that gift. It's a gift. Remember, we open it up. It's a gift. Don't give it back. Open up the gift and say, Lord, remember that gift right there that you gave me? I'd like to put it in, put the batteries in. I want to play with it right now. You know, I don't mean it like that, but you know what I'm saying? I don't want to downplay it, but it's a gift that the Lord has given each and every one of us that you can walk into and you just have to uh, activate it. Oh, open it up in me. I need it right now. I need The Lord says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. He'll give it. How many have asked for wisdom in the situations that you needed? it, Or did you just step right into that? I'm going to handle it. Amen. It's God's wisdom. Spirit led wisdom. Spirit given wisdom. God gave man wisdom to create in the Old Testament and created it for access to God. And in God's wisdom, I want you to hear the word. 
John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh, a Word of wisdom. It's Jesus in you that's the wisdom. Let me say that again. It's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's in, in, in the infinite wisdom of God, the word of wisdom played out was Christ crucified so that we could have eternal access to the throne room and didn't have to go through all this. Didn't have to go through ritual. Just had to believe, repent, be baptized, receive the spirit of God and function in that spirit and be saved. That was the plan. And now we have access to him forever. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. But I've messed up. I know you have. So have I. But nothing can separate you from him. So when you need wisdom this morning, when you need, when you, you need direction, Lord, I need direction. I need supernatural direction. I need supernatural guidance. Ask him and he'll give it freely. The Lord says, if you know, if you who are people give good gifts to your children, would I give you something else? Would I give you something back? If you ask me for a piece of bread, would I give you a stone or a snake? I can't quote it right off the top of my head. But he said, I'll give you good gifts as well if you ask for it. Church, the scripture says you have not because you ask not. And these are gifts that he's given us. He's already given them to you. You don't have to ask for them again. He gave them to you. But if you want to function in them, say, Lord, activate me in the gift of knowledge. Activate me in the gift of wisdom. Activate me in each and one of these gifts that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because it is a gift. And I'm going to read a portion of scripture for you. I want you to follow along in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm coming to a close. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning with verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing word, words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that have come not. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. How do you speak it? Because God gave it. Which is ordained before the world unto, glo unto our glory. Which none of the princes of the world knew. If they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Did you see all that wisdom in there? See, we don't, in verse 4, we don't preach and speak by man's wisdom. With enticing words of man's wisdom. What do we use? These gifts are for what? In verse 4 it says, but the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. That's not where it stands. Not what you know or who you know. It's who you know. <laughs> Right? But in the wisdom, but in the power of God. And it goes on, and, and, and I read it, and read it for yourself, and it's, it's a study uh, of basically how, how to walk in godly wisdom and not wisdom of men for your gifts and for your faith and for, for an anointing and to put your trust in the wisdom of God instead of your own self or other people. It's okay to have counselors. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. That's wisdom in amongst people, not the wisdom of God. So this morning, I'm so grateful for another gift. Are you grateful?